Welcome class of 2034 to Kindergarten Safari. Families, this time is going to fly by and before you know it, your child will be walking the graduation stage in 2034. My name is Meg Killingsworth and I'm the Family Engagement Coordinator here at Chester T. We'd like you to know that this presentation was created in 2019 before COVID-19 and masks. We have updated it for the 2021-22 school year with any new information. However, many of the pictures that we used in the slideshow are from 2019. Also, we've included the PDF of the slideshow for all the active links. So if you're looking for more information and you see links on a slide, just know that you can go to the PDF to find that information easily. We'd love to introduce this great team of kindergarten teachers. In our front row, going from left to right, we have Leslie Butler, Alicia Tilden, and Kelly Crandall. And in our back row, we have Dana Jenkins, Penny Wade, Lexi Wilkinson, Beth Shelton, and Leah Duval. By clicking this link at the top in the PDF version, you'll be able to get to know them individually and hear a little bit from each teacher. Here are other staff members you'll want to know. First off, we have Dr. Tennis, our principal, then Mr. Dugan, the assistant principal down on the K through two side, and then Miss Gaines, our assistant principal on the three, four, five side. We have a school resource officer who will be in our front office and walking the grounds of the school, Officer Angie. We have our office ladies, Miss Angela, Miss Ansley, and Miss Donna, who run the front office. And this is a picture of me, Meg Killingsworth, your family engagement coordinator. My whole job is to help families to navigate the school. One thing that we're really proud of at Chester T is maintaining our facilities. We're an older school, but we take great pride in keeping things up to date and fresh. Areas where you'll find us spending some money are on our playground, which makes kids want to come to school. So we like to update equipment and get new playground equipment. And also in our student restrooms, you'll find that each student restroom is painted differently in a fun, child-friendly way. We have PBIS, or Positive Behavioral Interventions and Support at the T. And this is where students follow our three simple rules, the Chester T way, which are be respectful, be responsible, be a problem solver. When students are showing expectations, they'll earn a little ticket called a Bravo Buck, and they can save those Bravo Bucks to shop in our school store, where they can find fun trinkets or even experiences, such as sit in the Eagle Chair, be the Fire Marshal Assistant, or have lunch with our Principal Dr. Tennis. We also have raffle drawings in winter and in spring where students can buy raffle tickets and will draw names to be winners. For more information on PBIS, you can click the link on our website. We have an after school program here at Chester T called Care for Kids. Our director is Deb Mason. And for more information on prices and days, you can also go to this link on our website. Remember that our slideshow has the PDF so that the links will be active. We've got some fun opportunities throughout the summer. One that you're gonna to wanna to mark on your calendar is Bus Roundup, and that will take place on Monday, July 26th. The drivers will call and let you know where and when they're going to pick up for that fun day and pick up your child and a family member to come to Chester T for a quick snack and a presentation on bus safety. It's a great opportunity. Just make sure that your registration is complete so that you get the call from the bus driver. Other ways to get connected are to check out our website and Facebook page. We'll be doing summer check-ins throughout the summer and posting those on our Facebook page. We'll also have bookmobile visits from our Forsyth County Library System. 
They'll visit throughout the summer where you can go and use technology or the printer or check out books. And if there are other opportunities that we're able to have once restrictions are lifted, we will post those on social media as well. This is our Forsyth County Schools Learner Profile, which is the foundation of everything that we do in teaching our students. The idea is that these attributes will be taught from K to 12 so that when students graduate from Forsyth County Schools, they will go out into the world as a leader ready for success. You may be wondering what your child is going to be learning next year in kindergarten. I'll tell you, times have changed since we grew up in kindergarten and learned how to get along with one another and how to write our name. These days, kids will work on reading skills through ARC or the American Reading Company program. They work on phonemic awareness, sight words, reading with fluency and comprehension. They'll have guided reading groups where it's small group instruction and that's teacher led to hone in on those skills and they'll bring home lots of books. They'll even learn good penmanship, letters of the week, and how to begin getting their thoughts on paper. In math, they will work on calendar and whole group activities to learn big concepts, and then they'll break down into small groups to practice those skills with hands-on activities and manipulatives and games. There are lots of great units for science, including motion and gravity, objects in the sky, rocks and soil, living and non-living, animals and plants. And then in social studies, a big part is their personal information and learning their address and phone number and where they live, community helpers, good citizenship, the US symbol and map skills, economy and national holidays. So it's become very academic in kindergarten. The American Reading Company, or ARC Reading Program, teaches all of our skills through four units. And ARC covers all the reading and writing skills that the students need to know and hook it all together so that kids are learning about all different kinds of things through their reading. ARC includes a morning meeting. They do a lot of read alouds to the teacher's reading. Students will have an independent reading time each day. There's a family involvement piece where they bring home books. There are special projects and lots and lots of celebrations. Here are just some examples of some of the fun that go along with our units of study. What we have found is that ARC really has helped kids love to read. Our report card changed this year to GKids 2.0, which is the Georgia Kindergarten Inventory of Developing Skills 2.0. And it is a year long progression based formative assessment where students are tested throughout the year and then the, their progress is reported back to families so that teachers and families have a common understanding of what the expectations are, how the students are doing, and what still needs to be done in order to be prepared for first grade. They'll be graded in language arts and math using the GKIDS inventory, and you'll see scores of not yet demonstrated, beginning, emerging, developing, or demonstrating and exceeding. Throughout the school year, your child's performance may range from not yet demonstrating to exceeding. For more information on GKIDS 2.0, you can click these links to find out a lot more, and then your child's teacher will discuss the report card both at our curriculum night in the fall, and then again at conferences. Along with our GKIDS 2.0 inventory, your student will receive grades in other areas. These will include their special area grades like for art, music, and PE, and then for science, social studies, and health. And the way that we grade those areas are with an S, P, or N. S stands for satisfactory, P stands for progressing, N stands for needs improvement. 
Your child will also receive a work habit grade for participation and work completion. And these um, grades will include E for exemplary, S for successful, or D for does not meet. With our report cards, your child's progress will be updated every nine weeks and the teacher will go over the report card at the child's first parent-teacher conference. You're gonna to wanna to set up a parent portal account this fall. This year with COVID, we did not send home paper copies, so parents access grades through parent portal. We'll help you get all set up this fall. In Forsyth, we have BYOT, which stands for Bring Your Own Technology and students in kindergarten are allowed to bring their own technology as well. Some things you're gonna to wanna to know about BYOT for kindergarten is first of all, it's completely optional. We are fortunate enough to have a one-to-one -one correspondence of Chromebook, Chromebooks to students. And so we have plenty of technology here. Sometimes a child has their own device that they want to bring, and when they do, we're able to use it um, for academic topics as well as skill practice. Just know that our internet is very, very filtered. We control the usage and we have classroom rules for using the device, and the devices are locked in the classroom when we're out of the room. Sometimes they're used during computer centers, um, as long as there's educational apps on them for reading and math. So again, it's totally fine not to send a device with your child. Here's an example of the schedule in kindergarten. This year, students would arrive from 7.10 to 7.40, and they would do a check-in with the teacher and some morning work. It's also a great time to get breakfast. Then at 7.45, to eight o'clock, we have our morning meeting and touch base, build community. Then the students will have their language arts time and their ARC reading. After that, they'll have either science or social studies topic. We usually don't do both at the same time. We pick one topic at a time. Take a restroom break and listen to a story and then go to lunch. After lunch, it's very academic with our math and both calendar and a whole group lesson and then break off into guided math groups. Kids will go outside for recess and then at the end of the day, they go to their pathway, which would include PE, art, music, our media center to check out books and have a lesson, a counseling lesson, AV or audio visual, and our science. Then they come back and pack up. We do a read aloud and it's time to go home. Some of our recess times vary a bit by class and sometimes snack varies, depending on if the students are hungrier um, in the morning or if they're hungrier towards the end of the day. We have our snack time because we're working hard and we get hungry, but we also keep on working in kindergarten. Our pathways include many classes. The first one is our PE special with Miss Waters and Miss Grindle. The students go to our big gym and learn about different sports and get some exercise. Miss Melanie Roper is our music teacher and the students will visit the music room to learn songs and instruments and all sorts of lessons. They'll even learn how to play the recorder when they get into fourth and fifth grade. Ms. Julie Hubbard is our art teacher and she teaches the kids how to create masterpieces. And our audio visual or AV special is taught by Ms. Jennifer Rees. She teaches all things technology and students also get some good typing and keyboarding skills. Miss Deb Clark is our science special teacher. She's very into STEM and gardening and having the students work to grow their own gardens. And she was one of our teacher of the year finalists. You'll find our media specialist, Sarah Wiggins in the media center where students will get lessons on researching, reading and all things related to the Media Center, and they'll also have time to check out books. 
and Miss Leela Fondo is our counselor for kindergarten and first grade. And your child will get to go to see her on the rotation and get good counseling lessons. Lunch will become one of your child's favorite times of the day, probably. Once our restrictions are lifted, then we'll be able to have visitors back in and visitors will be welcome to our cafeteria and have a special place on the stage. As far as your child's eating, families can pay by check, cash, or even online using My Payments Plus. If you send lunch money in the daily folder, just please put it in a baggie or an envelope and put your child's name and cafeteria and the amounts um, that you sent so we can get it to the proper place. The teachers don't keep track of account balances, but you can always find that if you enroll in My Payments Plus or also by contacting Deb Mason, our cafeteria manager. We get really excited about having visitors come to the lunchroom. It's really important to meet your child in the lunchroom rather than in the classroom and also to say goodbye in the lunchroom. It helps us to move on to our next planned activity and sometimes it can be hard for kids to say goodbye if it's at the classroom. And we do offer ice cream. Please know that ice cream cannot be charged. So if your child doesn't have enough money in their account to pay for the ice cream, they won't be able to get it. Most classes have ice cream one day a week. So if that happens, you can just add more money to the account and your child will be set for the next time. Our next slides are going to walk through what it looks like to get school lunch. This was pre-COVID, so now everything that your child receives will be packaged, including forks and spoons. There's always one hot entree offered along with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So your child always will have those options. And then most days there is a choice of a salad or a yogurt lunchable as well. We also have lots of fruits and vegetable choices and your child will be able to take up to three of those choices each day. Here's just some examples of the great healthy choices that are served on the line. Again, this year everything comes packaged. And we even have lots of choices for drinks. So we have flavored milk, regular milk, low-fat milk, and even juices. And here are a few examples of our ice cream for ice cream day. Lots and lots of choice can be found in our cafeteria. The students will go through the lunch line so that they can pick out their lunch along with the healthy choices. In years past, the child, after getting their lunch, will walk up to the cashier and put in their school ID number in order for their account to be charged for the lunch. Um, the cashiers are super helpful with kindergartners and helping them to get that number pushed in and pushed in correctly. This year, we've had contactless um, buying and so the children walk up and just give their name and then the cashier takes it from there. The next stop is the condiment table. Then they head to the table where they'll enjoy lunch. There's always lots of help in the cafeteria to help open any packaging or supply a napkin or fork if forgotten. This year, students all ate in their classrooms for lunch instead of eating in the cafeteria. And here's just some of our families joining for lunch and eating on the stage. Next, you'll want to meet Nurse Janet. If your child gets feeling badly or falls down and needs a Band-Aid, they'll visit the clinic and there Nurse Janet will take care of all their needs. You're going to want to notify both Nurse Janet and your child's teacher if your child has allergies or any medical needs. All medication left at school must have a form signed by you 
and Nurse Janet will handle all medication. Teachers do not handle the medication and students cannot bring medication with them. Even if they have something from the doctor that they need to take for an extended period of time, you're going to need to bring that in so that you can sign the form and so that children aren't transporting any medication. If your child gets sick at school, we'll send your child to the clinic. Um, and if they're sent home, they need to be fever free for 24 hours without the help of any medicine. Just know that your child might get sick a little bit more in kindergarten than other years as they're building up their immune system. And so it's gonna be really important to be here and on time every day that they are well. So kindergarten has changed a lot. It's very academic. We follow state standards along with our Forsyth County guidelines for instruction, and it's very rigorous. We teach in small differentiated groups during most of the day, and instruction is assessment driven. Our kindergartners are amazing, and we have learned that they can learn so much by introducing our concepts. Practicing these learned skills is very important. So what does differentiation mean? Just that we're gonna assess students from where they are and move them from there in learning the kindergarten standards. So here are some pictures of what differentiation and small group teaching look like. We have the teacher up top working with a group. We have kids working independently. We have an instructional assistant working with a group of kids, and we have either a volunteer or a support teacher that's come in and work with kids. We even have a helper that's working one-on-one. -on -one. So kids are working with kids in a group that are on a similar level, and the students rotate through the groups um, and so that they see each adult to learn those skills and get practice on their level. Calling all car riders, our drop off time in the morning is from 7.10 to 7.40 a.m. And our pickup time in the afternoon starts at 2.20 and will go to about 2.45. Expect heavy, heavy traffic the first two weeks of school and then it will get better. And also know that our car rider line has been heavier than in years past this past year. We have gotten very efficient though at moving cars and getting kids in and out. If you're worried about how our car rider line works, and no fear, here's a video of where to go and what to do that you can access. Families often wonder how their kindergartner will ever be able to find the buses or car riders. No worries, our teachers deliver all children to the buses and also we help with getting them to our car rider area in the cafeteria. Our afternoon car rider dismissal starts with this great team of ladies. Students will be waiting in their classroom and watching the screen if they're car riders. And the students know that they'll come to the cafeteria when their phase is called. And then they'll be lined up in green, yellow, or red and dismissed first with green and then yellow and then red. Once the children go to the cafeteria, they'll sit at the table with the green, yellow, or red flag. And then these ladies call the names and they also watch their names from the screen when it's their time to line up to go out to the car line. Students will walk single file in our line outside to the sidewalk where they'll see Miss Waters and the cars pull all the way up in the line and then students will be released to walk to their cars. We have a great system for our bus riders as well. First off, teachers will walk the students down the hallway out to the bus lanes. Then each teacher says goodbye with a handshake, hug, or high five before children will board the bus. 
After saying goodbye, the children walk to their bus as the teacher is going from bus to bus to dismiss. We have little stickers in the hallway all the way from bus lane down to kindergarten that we call breadcrumbs. It's like the story Hansel and Gretel where the kids follow the breadcrumbs all the way down the hallway to find their classes. We also will have lots of adults along the way and even older students who will help these little ones get to their classroom. So how can you help this summer? Here's a little list of things that you could be practicing this summer to get your child geared up for the fall. We also will be posting things on our Facebook page that you can check out and see what's happening. And we have a Chested Tea intro video that you're welcome to watch with your child about some of the highlights of our school. Even driving by the school and pointing out the school to get your child excited or visiting our playground, um, just the more times that your child can see the school, the better that he or she will feel about attending big school in the fall. We have some important school policies for transportation and absences. For transportation, you'll tell your child's teacher how he or she is going home each day and what your plan is, whether it's car rider, bus rider, after school or daycare van. If your plan is going to change, those changes need to be handwritten notes put in your child's folder for the teacher. Emails and phone calls to the teacher can't be accepted because if the teacher had a substitute or wasn't able to check, your child would not probably get to the correct place. Another policy we have is that we don't allow checkouts after 2 o'clock p.m. And after 2 o'clock, we'll start the dismissal process and packing up, and it can be very difficult to find a child for checkout once they're headed to buses or car line. So please no checkouts after 2 p.m. As far as absences, for every time your child's absent, you're going to want to send an excuse within five days. You can write your child's teacher an email or a note if you send an email, copy our receptionist or attendant secretary on that, <clears throat> Ms. Donna Kirkland, and that way she can print it, print it and put it in the files. You have five days to do this. If you visit the doctor, it's always great to get a doctor's excuse. Just know that three tardies equal an absence, and attendance is taken seriously at Chastity because you cannot make up those missed days. We can send some work home for your child to do, but the time in class and collaborating and discussing is just invaluable. Here are ways to communicate with your child's teacher. First off, your child will be given a daily folder at Open House, and this is a great communication tool to use for notes and money. So please label any money with the name and, and what it's for and the amount. And you can also put notes in the folder for transportation changes, absences, or any other matters. The folders will be checked every day. From our end, your child's teacher will be sending a newsletter and that will go over curriculum for the week and also important dates and reminders and any special notices about events or things coming up. Most teachers choose to send that on Fridays. We love email because that can be an easy one to get back to you on. Um, notes are great as well. You can always leave a voicemail and the extensions will be shared in August for your child's teacher. Just know that during teaching time, teachers usually cannot pick up the phone because they're busy teaching. We'll talk more about its learning in the fall and show you this online learning platform that teachers will be posting their lesson plans, newsletters, homeworks, and all their learning links for your child. Here's just a quick example of It's Learning, our online learning platform. And in kindergarten, they have Wi-Fi Wednesday, where they'll give a quick little homework assignment on It's Learning to get your child comfortable with the program. 
Our school also has lots of communication tools. We like our social media and use Facebook the most to post information. If you have a parent portal account, you can receive messages through the messenger. We also will have a monthly school newsletter that will publish close to the first of every month. We have lots of videos that we put out there, including a Facebook Friday video that you can access, and you will get the grade level newsletter or the class newsletter that will go home in the communication folder. Most grade levels use a gold folder, but some teachers choose to do their own color. It will be a consistent folder for the class and you'll see it in the book bag each day. If you're not on Facebook, it is not a problem. You can access our Facebook page by going to our website at this link. From our web page, you scroll all the way to the bottom where you'll see our social media buttons and you can click Facebook there to access our posts. Here's a list of ways that you can help your child next year. First off is check the daily folder and empty it each day. Make sure you're looking over graded work to see how your child is doing. And please read the weekly newsletter so you know what's going on in the classroom. It's great if you can discuss each day with your child and ask him or her about special activities, their behavior, or even favorites of the day. Always know that you can reach out to your child's teacher when needed, and you'll be invited to parent-teacher conferences in October and in March, and then we have our academic parent-teacher team meetings three times throughout the year as well. All of those are great times to come into the classroom and hear progress. We'll be sending homework and skills and tools that you can um, practice at home. So it would be great if you can practice those. Once restrictions are lifted, we would love it if you can volunteer if you're available. And also pick a time to visit for lunch once, once those restrictions are lifted. Um, it makes your child proud to when you visit the school and also to know that you care what's going on. Here's just a quick glimpse of academic parent-teacher teams. This picture is a kindergarten classroom, and so all the parents come in together, learn about a skill that the kids are learning and ways to help at home. We pop up a graph to show you your child's progress in comparison to the rest of the class, and only you know your child's APTT secret graph number to keep confidentiality. You'll leave with a bag of goodies of things that you can practice and ways to make that practice fun. We would love for you to get involved at Chesity. There are lots of parent leadership and volunteer opportunities and family members are welcome in our building. Those will be going out and we would love to have you because our motto is together we are Chesity. Here's a menu of ways that you can get connected at Chesity once our volunteer program is up and running. And we'll publish this and send it home so that you will know who to reach out to based on your talents and loves. Out of the mouths of babes, here's some advice from our kindergarten kids. I think one of my favorites is school is fun. You get to learn so much. And also, you are going to be tired. These kids will work hard in kindergarten. Here's a glimpse of some of the fun at Chastity. Chastity is such a fun place to learn and come each day. You'll find happy teachers and warm, welcoming staff members throughout the hallway and lots and lots of celebrations. One of the main celebrations in kindergarten is the 100th day of school where the children are invited to dress up like 100 year olds 
and to walk in a special parade to celebrate that day. All of this is just another peek at the fun we have in Chested Tea and lots of fun in kindergarten. Help us to get to know your child better by clicking this link and filling out this information. You'll help us to get to know your child better and place your child in the best classroom for him or her. Expect mail this summer. The postcards will go out to welcome students back and give open house information. Open house is planned for Tuesday, August the 3rd, and students will be invited to come see the classroom and meet their teacher. They'll also get car rider tags, lunchroom information, and after school care information if it's needed, along with much, much more. We'll be sending out more information as the summer goes along with our full plan for open house. Also, mark your calendars for the first day of school, Thursday, August the 5th. We can't wait to see you and get to know you. Families, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you and go over things as needed. Also, join us for our live event on Facebook Live so we can answer your questions there. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining.